hydrostatic force on chord surface. So let's say we have one chord surface like this and we have one chord surface like this and this one is the boundary wall and this one is free surface level. So it is holding a water on this side or liquid on this side and this one is any irregular shape that we don't know and this time I have a vertical wall like this and the water is holding on this side. Now these are two different situations. What is the different situation here? Here is the water is present on this side, that is liquid is present on this side. So we need to exert a force on this side. At this point it will exert a force on this and if the direction of force is go on changing. But is every time it is perpendicular. If you compute all these forces, to compute these forces you have to resolve along horizontal and vertical and then you have to find out a total sum along x, along y. But whatever the sum will come, it will always go in this direction, that is x force and this will go y force because none of these forces are going in a upward direction. In this case, if the water is present on this side or on this side, on left side, so will it start exerting a force like this and is the force are going this way, are they perpendicular now? So whatever the result will come, one component will go this side and one component will go this side, that is true. So resultant of all these forces will be like this and one component will go like this. Whereas resultant of all this component will go like this and other is going this one and the resultant will be like this. Whereas resultant will be like this. Are the two situations are clear to you? Is this is a summation of fx? Is it a summation of fy? And this one is my resultant force f or I will call fr. This time summation of fx, summation of fy and this one is my fr. Now one reason is given for this is something like this. Is the water is really present here? Is the water is really present above the gate? Yes. And that is why it will push the gate in a downward direction. Now if I extend this water here and I will show this one is the imaginary column of water. Is that imaginary column water will push downward? It is imaginary so you have a upward action. So you have to take this way. If it is the water is really present, it will try to push it downward. So we have no objection. Whereas there is the imaginary water here. So actually imaginary water the force has to act downward. But since imaginary you have this type of force. Whereas there is no question about horizontal on both sides. If the water is present here, what will go like this. The water is present here, will go like. What is the job now? We have to calculate fx and we have to calculate f5. Now calculation of fx naturally means you have to go for integration. Because if you consider this area, it makes a different theta. And if you make this one, it makes different theta. And if you consider this area, it makes different theta. So any one area will consider. I will consider this area. I will call this one is dA. I will call this is pressure P. Let consider the depth of this point equal to H. So are we able to calculate the pressure at this point? If this depth is H, is this pressure equal to rho multiplied by G multiplied by H? Is this pressure multiplied by this area is the force? And we have resolved that force along X and Y and we will solve it. So let us enlarge this one. So we have this area is like this. Let consider this area makes an angle of theta with the horizontal. We are taking this area equal to what? Da area. On this one we have a hydrostatic force act which is exactly perpendicular to this plane. This hydrostatic force is df force. Is this df force is da multiplied by p value. So we have df equals to p multiplied by da value. p is nothing but rho multiplied by g multiplied by h multiplied by da. And as we have stated you that we have to resolve this into two components. So I have to first find out one component like this and I have to find out one component like this. So this one is my dffx and this one is my dfy. Is this angle is same as theta? This angle is 90 minus theta. Is this value is equal to theta? So is this component is cos component and this one is sine component. So what is dfy? The component of this force along y direction is equal to df multiplied by cos of theta and what is the horizontal component? So horizontal component is fx is it df into sin theta. We have to just add this value to get the fy value and add this value you will get x value. So to find out the total force along x we will integrate dfx dfx equals to integral 
dfx is df multiplied by cos theta and df is rho gh rho multiplied by g multiplied by h multiplied by da this is my force and x component is cos theta cos theta sin theta this one is sin theta now what happened here in this case my density assumed to be constant g is constant is my h will going to vary as my area will change and even my angle theta will also vary for each of them that is same or different for this area area angle is different angle is different for this one angle is different so rho i can take outside g i can take outside i have to left with h and i have da into sin theta as me is concerned i don't know mathematical term like this a so physical interpretation i can take from this but i can very well take the physical interpretation of h into da h into da is h bar that we can define so let's try to understand what is the da sin theta so da sin theta is nothing but this area so what actually we are doing we are taking this area like here so we take the next area like this next area like this so are you going to take all this area in this fashion so this become a vertical plane is this area is nothing but the projection of this along the horizontal force direction so that we can write like this projected area better so this one is da projected area so here i have rho g da projected and i can replace this term as rho multiplied by g multiplied by h bar but is it projected area so this one is try to understand the meaning of projected area is this figure and this figure is almost same figure i have taken the standard case of quarter circle gauge this one is the length perpendicular to plane of paper so if you want to find out this force what you do you take a projection of this part suppose this point is a this point is b this point is c can you get this a on b you will get this part a on b it will be like this so this one is a a same as b this is c and this part you can visualize like this so is it as good as the calculation of vertical force is it as good as the calculation of horizontal force on vertical plane nothing else and what about this area is it a projected area so your job is very simple if this radius is 2 meter and this one is 5 meter is this area is 2 multiplied by 5 meter and you can very well calculate your fh force and naturally this force will pass from center of pressure so this calculation is same as this one only thing that you have to take the projected area so jo bhi chord shape aapka hoga usko project kar dijiye and once you get projected you treat this as a regular problem so let's try to understand the concept of what dfy so we'll go for fy fy is integral of df cos theta df is rho multiplied by g multiplied by h multiplied by da multiplied by cos theta so again i can take out rho common i can take out g common what i left is h multiplied by da cos theta now this term i am club it now try to understand what is da cos theta da cos theta is it this term this term is da cos theta and if you look back into this figure i will try to show here is this term is a horizontal term is initially my area was like this and now i am showing this is this term is same as da cos theta and over this is my column of liquid is this one so is it a nothing but a prism it has a area da cos theta and this side is h so is this total is it nothing but volume and is this volume is dv is equal to h multiplied by da cos theta is this dv is the volume of liquid above the gate since i written h it is above so this one is rho multiplied by g is it a simply integral dv and what is dv actually volume about the gate so this equals to rho multiplied by g is it multiplied by v and what we call this v is the volume about the gate and is this total term is nothing but weight of liquid about the gate if you add all such prisms like this like this is it nothing but weight so this is w what is w called as is a weight of the liquid above the gate naturally it will act downward this time the weight is really present here so it will act downward so this is how you have to compute your fx and fy weight is also called as gravity force for this type of curved gate we always neglect what thickness thickness is assumed to be zero it can be quarter circle it can be semi circle it can be in the form of parabola parabola in the form of dams dam ki jo wall hoti hai in the form of parabola and that we have a tank fill up to this level 
and this one is vertical wall. So entire tank space is filled with the water. Now suppose in this tank I introduce this shape. Length is perpendicular to board. Can you imagine this? So is it a semicircular log? So if I introduce this particular inside the tank, then if I do like this, will the column of water will be displaced? Jo water pehle yahan pe present tha, kya wo water hamara displaced ho jayega? And even if we have this type of shape also, and we try to insert this shape inside, will the water will displace? The this volume volume of water will be displaced. And you are perpendicular to the plane of board. Now, in the previous case, water is not displaced because it does not have thickness. It doesn't have thickness. It doesn't have volume. So no volume is displaced. But for this case, if the volume is displaced, so this is slightly different case. Particularly happen in the case of semicircular log. Now, whatever this volume is here, are we able to calculate this volume? And this volume multiplied by rho multiplied by g is it the weight W? Rho multiplied by g, but this time is it a volume displaced? Whenever we have a concept of volume displaced, is it same called as buoyant force? Buoyant force is defined as weight of liquid displaced. So this is basically weight of liquid displaced. And whenever we have buoyant force, we have up. Now how to going to solve for this problem? Let's try to explain me this. Why I am getting a b upward? Now first of all, think of this horizontal portion. For this horizontal portion, is your force is like this. And for bottom portion, is the force is like this. But as far as this force is considered, depth of this one is small from free surface, and the depth of this one is large. It means that on the top side we have less magnitude of force, on bottom side we have more magnitude of force. Out of that, the horizontal component we can add, and we have a net horizontal force, same as this situation. But is the vertical component of this one will be like this, and is the vertical component of this one is like this. Just now we have claimed that this is more force as compared to this one. It means that the net resultant force will act. Is this force is acting downward? This force will going to act like this. Or will the vertical force will act like? This? But you have to take the same level. So this time it is acting like this. And vertical force you have to calculate the considering the top volume plus bottom volume. Subtract it. It will take long time. Better to go by volume displacement.